Secret Webinar, your independent HP software community. And uh, today's topic is mobile application lifecycle management. And uh, this webinar today is brought to you by the Vivid India chapter and the Testing Quality Assurance and Application Lifecycle Management Special Interest Group. Um, and if you're interested in this uh, group, you can get in touch with the leaders um, who are listed here on the Vivid Worldwide website. Uh, and since you introduced myself, your uh, facilitator today, my name is Damien Versace. I am um, a co-leader of the Vivid Melbourne chapter as well as the Testing Quality Assurance uh, Special Interest Group. And uh, I also am a consultant practice leader at uh, SMS Management Technology based in Melbourne, Australia. And uh, to introduce today's presenter, uh, today's presenter is Manish Gupta, who is a product manager from HP Software. So Manish, I'll hand over to you now. And uh, just, I guess, some yeah, housekeeping. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you go, Manish. Yeah, uh, just uh, to let everybody know, we are going to record this session, and at the end we are going to have a QA. and a uh, There's also a webinar control panel, uh, which you can see on the slide. This is... <coughs> you know, where you can put your questions at the end or throughout the presentation. We'll take them at the end. So with that, I'd like to welcome you all to this webinar, Mobile Application Lifecycle Management. And uh, I want to thank Vivid for giving us this opportunity to present to all of you. Here is a brief agenda of what I'm going to talk about today. We'll, talk, we'll start with talking about uh, the paradigm of mobile applications that we are all seeing around us now. The next thing we'll talk about is the mobile application delivery lifecycle, what are the stages it goes through. And then we will talk about specific challenges about uh, in building these applications and the solution from HP software called HP Anywhere that helps us build mobile applications. The next we're going to talk about the challenges with regard to testing mobile applications and the solutions from HP Software for testing the functionality and performance of mobile applications. And finally, once these applications are deployed, what are the typical challenges that are faced in monitoring the performance and availability of mobile apps and the corresponding solutions from HP Software? So let's begin by talking about the world of mobile applications that we see around us. Gartner is predicting that by the year 2016, out of every five application projects, four projects are going to be mobile application projects. What we're also witnessing is a huge rise in the mobile internet traffic. Just to give you an example, almost 55% of all the time spent on retail sites today is through mobile devices. So it is no surprise that what we are seeing with respect to the mobile applications is a huge pro proliferation as well as a change in the style of working, especially with respect to mobile devices having features for collaboration, social collaboration. It has embedded sensors these days from various things like temperature to camera uh, to GPS to, to location-based services. Almost everything is getting revolutionized by the advent of mobile. So what are some of the areas that mobile is significantly impacting today? So every customer is looking uh, to increase his brand awareness to mobile devices. So marketing departments are really keen uh, in adopting mobile solutions, mobile applications to reach to more and more customers and give them a consistent experience across devices, across mobiles, tablets, as well as traditional devices like PC. Business is looking at mobile as an additional channel. It's, uh, you know, new channels for uh, sales, for distribution, uh, again, for customer awareness, customer service. There is uh, a huge, huge impact on business, and businesses are realizing that mobile applications uh, are very profitable. Uh, customers who interact with businesses through mobile applications are giving more profitability. But when it comes to IT, who's in charge of delivering mobile applications, 
they are facing a lot of complexity, both in terms of building as well as delivering these applications. And it's a complex environment in terms of managing security, in terms of managing performance, in terms of managing a good customer experience with respect to functionality, as well as the task of distributing applications, especially when it comes to enterprise users. The, the whole uh, aspect of distributing safely and securely based on the roles of the users is something that is challenging IT today. I would also like to quickly mention that in surveys, uh, this is slightly a dated survey about a couple of years old now, you can easily imagine that the uh, statistics would be, would be even much higher today. But even if we go back a few years, we know that today spending on mobility is a big imperative for IT. Almost 50% or more of the respondents of this survey said that they have more than 20% of IT budget dedicated for mobility. So next I would like to talk about the mobile application lifecycle. And what you can see here is the, the mobile application lifecycle starts with the designing and building of mobile applications. Here the people involved are concerned with creating applications for mobile, but at the same time they are worried about the various form factors that are present in the market today and the ones that will be available in the future. So even today, you can easily imagine we have uh, you know three inches, four inches of smartphones. We have seven inch, ten inch tablets, and we still have to cater to uh, the needs of the PC users. What is also important in the context of building mobile applications is the connected system of records, which is about providing a context, providing a, a social collaboration mechanism between the various users of mobile apps, and I'll highlight that in, in the solutions we discuss. The next phase of the mobile application lifecycle is about optimizing or testing. And here again, the concerns are testing on real devices, tuning the applications for both server and network performance, as well as managing the security of the data on the mobile device as well as the corporate data that might be exchanged. The next stage in the mobile application lifecycle is about distributing mobile apps. This is where, especially when it comes to IT and enterprise applications, the IT administrators are really interested in managing it from a role-based access distribution, managing it with the perspective of securing the backend, securing the device, securing the corporate data. And finally, once the applications are deployed to the end users, diagnosing bottlenecks, uh, identifying problems, whether they're on the network, whether they're on the device itself, whether it's at the backend, so profiling for performance across the usage curve is very important for monitoring and measuring the, uh, the mobile apps. So we will touch upon all these areas in this webinar in the next 40 minutes or so. So first, I'm going to talk about the design and build stage. And the solution I'm going to talk about is HP Anywhere. But this is also the same solution that helps us distribute applications securely to the end users. Now, when we talk about mobile apps, especially enterprise mobile apps, it is very important to connect with the different personas involved. So for an IT, and why? Because the IT administrator, as I said, today is struggling for you know, securely managing access to these applications, securing the back end, the corporate data. At the same time, struggling with the paradigm of BYOD, every employee in the organization wants to bring his own device. And to, to do that successfully, for him, mobile means to find a way to easily distribute, securely distribute the applications by the user job roles. For a developer who's struggling with the technology device fragmentation and the siloed systems of the past, for him it's important to have API-based systems. For him it is important to have applications that he can build once but then deploy to multiple devices. And for an employee who is just, uh, you know, uh, bored with using, you know, old age technology and bound to the PC, uh, whereas in his personal life he's able to use smartphones and collaboration and anywhere access to application to data for, say, his online banking applications. For him, even at his workplace, the employee wants to be able to work with the latest gadget with his own device uh, in the fashion of 21st century. So HP Anywhere is the mobile application development platform for HP. 
As we discussed in the previous slide, all the three personas get addressed by this solution. So for the IT administrator whose key responsibility is to manage role-based access to enterprise apps, there is a HP Anywhere server that allows him to distribute these apps securely to the user. For the developer, it provides a developer platform. It's an, uh, we provide a plugin for Eclipse that helps developers build mobile applications with the latest and greatest frameworks like HTML5 and JavaScript. At the same time, it easily empowers the developer to develop these applications for multiple screen sizes, as well as provide collaboration capabilities so that uh, data can be exchanged between different applications within HP Anywhere. And I'll show you an example of that. And for the end user who really wants to work in the 21st century, it is one single place to access all enterprise applications. So the user does not have to uh, download application by application uh, from his corporate IT network, but just downloads one HP Anywhere uh, application to the smartphone or to the tablet, and within that is provided a framework for mini apps, the multiple apps that the user needs to do his day-to-day -day job uh, in the organization. So let's review the solution uh, in, in a little bit more detail. So HP Anywhere, as I said, is a solution uh, that provides a framework uh, for the developers to work in a single workspace to be able to build, test, publish, and manage the mobile applications. It is providing an HTML5 based UI framework. And as I said, it allows collaboration. So if the user is using, say, an internal expense management application, and needs real-time collaboration with his or her manager for an approval, you can easily do that with embedded collaboration frameworks. The mini-app concept, again, is allowing the user to uh, on-demand access the applications from the app catalog within the framework of HP Anywhere. And for the IT administrator, it allows uh, a place for securely managing role-based access to these applications. Uh, managing the admin rights, the groups, and as I said, for the developer, we provide the Eclipse plugin. So here's the view that the end user would see when accessing HP Anywhere. So what you see on the left side of the screen is the HP Anywhere icon on the smartphone, or it could be on a tablet. And within that one application, so it's a secure login to this HP Anywhere application. And once the user is logged in, you see on the right side of your screen is the various applications this employee or the user in the organization can use to, day, to do his day to day task. So what you see is, for example, timesheet time submission application, there's an application for manager milestones, approvals. Uh, you know, finding a meeting room. And, you know, we are taking all these examples by experience. HPIT, and, HP, and I'll show you this case study, was the first organization to adopt the solution for HP employees. So all these applications run inside this single container, which allows cross-application uh, collaboration. And there's also this concept of a front page, which lets you see a summary of all the activity that's going on. Today, this platform supports iOS and Android platforms, both uh, smartphone, tablet. But what's also important is that you can access these applications through a PC, through a browser as well. So what you see on your screen are the various form factors. We have a tablet or a tablet and even a smartphone that is supported by HP Anywhere. Here's a screenshot of what the developer works in. So this is a plugin to the Eclipse IDE. And you can see with the, with the help of this plugin, the developer can quickly mark which areas of the application uh, and, and uh, to work on and which form factors, the desktop, the smartphone, or the tablet that he wants to publish these applications to. For the IT administrator, as I said, it provides an enterprise app store. So within the App Store, the IT administrator can edit the groups and uh, change the status of the application, whether it's available or down. So it is one place where the administrator manages uh, the security and the role-based access. And this can be tied to a corporate LDAP or authentication uh, single sign-on so that 
the security framework of the IT organization of the corporate uh, is maintained while distributing mobile applications to the end users. Now, how is HP Anywhere unique? As I talked about, there is a concept of front page, which gives you a highlight of all the activity that's going on with respect to the multiple actions that you are doing in your mobile apps. But it's also a people-to-people -people collaboration that is enabled. So I, the example that we talked about is uh, me submitting an expense to my manager and he, let's say, commenting on it that it's too high. And based on that feedback, I respond to him why it was high, why you know I had to uh, go to a conference and there was uh, certain people you know that I went out with for dinner and so on and so forth, and the manager approved his expense. So the case study I'm going to talk about here is uh, HP itself. HP is a large enterprise, as you all know. We have 300,000 employees, and HP IT was faced with the same challenges, that the employees were starting to bring their own device to work. And HP has hundreds of applications that the end users or the employees of HP use to, to do their day-to-day -day functions. It was just not enough to have email capabilities on mobile. So, for example, doing my expenses, my travel booking, uh, manager milestones, booking a meeting room. Uh, these were all applications that uh, IT realized that had to be provided to users on their choice of mobile devices. And they deployed HP Anywhere Solution, the first employee application that was rolled out to HP Anywhere, as I said, is my expense application. And gradually, more and more users are getting added to this platform and more and more applications are added for the convenience of HP employees. And we also have uh, you know, added a lot of customers in the last one year that this solution has been out in the market. We have a lot of external customers as well. Uh, so uh, you know, based on your interest, we are happy to engage with you and provide you more details. So that completes our uh, discussion on designing and building mobile applications. The next. Uh, area of the mobile application lifecycle we'll talk about is testing and optimizing the mobile applications. Now, quality of mobile applications is really fundamental. I think we can all relate to our experiences with respect to mobile applications. And we've all seen buggy applications on smartphones, and no longer do we go to an app store and download an application which might have one or two star rating. So mobile quality is very visible. It is in the public domain, and a poor ranking can have a significant impact on the revenue on the business. So, you know, we're always looking for high uh, four star, five star applications, and every customer today who's rolling out mobile applications is concerned about the quality of mobile applications because that is uh, directly going to impact how the users are going to feel about using that particular service. So, why is mobile testing so difficult? I mean, why are we talking about a solution for mobile testing? Now, when it comes to testing mobile applications, there are various challenges on top of existing challenges of, uh, you know, uh, rolling out applications, regular PC-based applications. So the problem specific to the mobile market is, a, uh, is especially the market fragmentation. There are multiple OS environments. We're not just talking about a Windows-based PC, and everybody comes through a browser and accesses the application. We are talking about iOS, we're talking about Android, Windows Phone, we still have some BlackBerry users left. So there are not just the fragmentation of the operating system, but also the versions that are in use, uh, the screen sizes, the input style. And while we are doing all this, it's a very highly competitive world and bringing applications faster to market and improving the time to market of these applications is becoming more and more critical. When it comes to testing these applications, it's also important to test on real devices versus emulators because people really want to know how this application is going to behave on a real device connected to a real network. Also, when time to market is a concern because application updates are coming so frequently for mobile applications, automation becomes very important. And while automation is possible in certain areas, there are still areas where we want to use more manual testing. So it's a combination of a manual and automated testing that we really need for mobile testing. Also, companies are struggling to 
do device management, especially when the teams are distributed. Today I might have multiple mobile applications in my environment and some testers are based in one building and some are in other buildings. Some might be based in another city, some might be based in even another country to an outsource provider. So with this kind of uh, distributed environment and multiple devices to test on, for a customer it is a huge cost today to manage the devices and give access to the different testers. So this is another big challenge. When it comes to the users and the performance, uh, the network conditions, the peripherals, the, you know, the devices, uh, the Bluetooth, the, the, you know, the various sensors, the near field communication, all these peripherals and the devices that are proliferating in the market is adding additional challenges that need to be addressed for mobile. So what are some of the key considerations for testing mobile applications and choosing a solution for mobile testing? The first one is to be able to test on real devices. We need to be able to test on real smartphones, real tablets connected to a real mobile service or even a Wi-Fi network. When it comes to automating testing for mobile applications, we really need to keep in mind the fragmented environment. So having a flexible and a robust solution also means that the scripts that we recall for automation should be agnostic to the device. We really are looking for capabilities where we can say script on an Android phone and be able to replay the same script on, uh, on an iPhone. What is also important is the ability to test native applications which are installed as uh, an icon on your application. It could be hybrid application which you know involves going from a browser to a native application, or it could be just a browser, a mobile browser-based application. So with all that in mind, uh, we really need a flexible and robust framework. When it comes to device management, once again, as I said, there are multiple device form factors, carriers that we need to consider, as well as uh, distributed teams who would need these devices at various times. So we really need a cloud-based solution that provides capability to share devices across remote users, but at the same time, it should be secure and centralized enough for IT to keep tight control. And the final aspect is the integration with ALM systems, your existing systems for application lifecycle and quality management. And HP ALM integration is something key to the solution that I'll talk about. So the solution from HP for testing mobile applications is a holistic solution for doing uh, testing on real mobile devices. It, so all the challenges that we just talked about, we are addressing those challenges through UFT Mobile. It is an extension to HP UFT, erstwhile also known as Quick Test Professional or QTP. A lot of people would be familiar with QTP. Integrated with HP ALM or the Quality Center for Test Management. So this is where we record the scripts which are device agnostic and the scripts are recorded on a real device which is connected to a cloud. So the real mobile devices are connected either to a virtual private cloud or to an on-premise solution. I also want to highlight a few more features of this solution. It helps us not only automate the testing but also solve the problem of continuous testing, testing in the agile delivery lifecycle. It provides complete manageability of these devices so from a remote desktop where the tester is working and the devices are hosted in a cloud, whether it's a hosted solution or even an on-premise cloud, private cloud, we can manage the devices completely. Uh, they are, you know, full charging, uh, switch uh, power on off, uh, as well as, uh, you know, full traceability of the action. And not just that, but the, the solution is also quite scalable from a single project to enabling multiple hundreds of teams who are working on concurrently on multiple devices, it is all possible. And we are also addressing complex scenarios with respect to, as I said, near field communication devices, with respect to you know, voice injection and recognition functionality that might be typical of uh, some of the test cases for testing mobile applications. So there are two deployment models for the mobile testing solution. One is the virtual private cloud, which is dedicated devices hosted on a cloud-based platform. These devices are 
based in a data center and there are multiple locations we'll see in the next slide. And with the help of this hosted uh, virtual private cloud, we are able to access multiple devices and do the automated testing. It also allows us to test uh, some applications manually. There is also a public cloud of devices which are shared across multiple users, which is an additional uh, feature that we provide along with the virtual private cloud. But for the virtual private cloud solution, as I said, the customers get a pool of dedicated devices, 24 cross 7, those devices are for the needs of the enterprise that is buying this solution. There is a wide set spectrum of devices that we support in the solution. Uh, where, you know, leading manufacturers, you can think of HTC, Nokia, Motorola, Samsung, you know, you name it. Uh, there is a full list of all the supported services and devices at the URL given at the bottom of your screen. As I said, this is a scalable and powerful solution and provides the full device control from fast charging cycles to audio injection, reboots. Uh, testers have the flexibility to easily deploy their applications through utilities on these mobile devices. And uh, the presence is in various data centers located globally across US, Europe, uh, some Asia Pacific countries, and uh, it only is increasing as we move forward. Now the next solution that I'm talking about is the Mobile Cloud Express, which is the deployment option for UFT Mobile on-premise. This is where customers want to have their own devices uh, for testing. They do not want to test in a virtual private cloud hosted in our data centers, but rather the customer wants to do testing on devices on their premises. So it's uh, for customers who are looking for a secure and robust on-premise solution. And again, it's the same solution for, uh, a, so it provides cloud-based access to the devices on premise, and it provides the same capabilities for manual testing and automated testing of mobile applications. A uh, few things uh, that are typical of testing on premise uh, that come to mind are about, you know, scenarios where we want to test with proprietary hardware devices like sensors, payment cards, near-field communication, Bluetooth devices, which is really not possible to do over devices hosted in a remote cloud. So for that, customers want to have devices, the full control over the devices. And the same solution uh, that we provide in the hosted cloud, we ship that solution. It comes with uh, in multiples of two cradles in which the devices are hosted and the uh, customer have full control on premise to connect, disconnect these devices, to plug in another device of their choice and have 24 plus seven availability and the availability of these devices to the tester is again pro provided through a cloud-based portal. So it provides that same collaboration and sharing of the devices between various users who might be distributed in uh, you know, different buildings in different cities maybe. And from a capability perspective, again, the scripting capabilities are the same. Uh, these are device agnostic scripts, support hybrid object recognition from you know, image-based recognition to object-based recognition and integrates with HPLM for batch execution of scripts, uh, for auditing purposes, for test management, as well as continuous testing. Here's a case study of uh, Bank of America, a leading bank. Uh, they have almost 12 million customers using their online banking application. And before they implemented UFT mobile solution, they would spend 18 days for testing these this particular application on multiple devices. They had hundreds of test cases, uh, testers distributed in uh, various locations, and they had not just the challenge to uh, reduce the cycle time of testing, but they also had this big challenge of managing the devices and giving access to the devices to various testers distributed in different places. So to solve this, all these problems, Bank of America adopted HPUFT Mobile, and from 18 days, they were able to reduce the testing cycle time to 42 hours. So you can see the amount of savings that one can get from adopting automated testing of mobile applications. Next, I'm going to talk about the performance impact of mobile applications. As you can see on this slide, 
just by injecting a few mobile users. And what, what you're seeing is a typical uh, load runner screen uh, doing a load test. And during a load test, a few minutes into the test, uh, a few mobile users have been injected. And you can see how quickly the response time can deteriorate. Now, what, we, what we're all familiar with is that mobile applications, especially when going through mobile networks, typically take longer time. And once the user gets accustomed to spending a little bit longer than his traditional PC on a mobile application, you're actually increasing the average latency of the time spent per session on the backend. And as more and more users access applications through mobile, it simultaneously increases the concurrent load at the backend, the latency. So there are more users at any given time doing work on the application uh, just because their sessions are kept alive longer. Uh, and that has a significant impact on uh, mobile applications. So in this example, you can see uh, before uh, you know, any real network conditions were injected into the load testing, uh, we can see that almost 70 users were concurrently accessing this application. And I'm sorry, uh, the response times were pretty good. But just by, uh, you know, baking the mobile network conditions, uh, for example, if uh, say 200 users are coming from a 2G network and accessing a mobile application, suddenly the response times deteriorate very quickly. So we know this for a fact that the moment we inject real network conditions into a mobile test, the response times, the behavior of the application, the performance can severely degrade. So we do not want a false sense of security. Instead, we want to thoroughly test mobile applications for performance because that also has an impact on how users rate your application and get the good customer experience. Uh, but also it is important to bake in the true network conditions. So from a load testing perspective, we have uh, two protocols that are available, the mobile true client protocol for all browser-based applications on mobile devices. It uses HP's true client technology that some of you might be familiar, familiar with. Is available with the web 2.0 protocol. And it records through the browser and just behaves like a true browser while recording. And then we have the HTTP HTML based recording, the web based recording for recording both native and mobile browser based applications. It can record either through emulators or even through mobile devices connected uh, you know, through networks where we analyze the network traffic. But today we also have capability to do proxy recording where we can connect our device to go through a proxy, which could be the machine where we are recording the virtual user script or the VU gen is installed. And through proxy recording, we can today record mobile applications in our regular web protocol. And to factor in the network conditions that might be uh, you know, impacting mobile application performance, we have integrated with Shindra Network Virtualization. So Shindra is our technology partner, and we OEM this technology as part of our solution. So we can install the network virtualization software on, on the load generators which the virtual users are running, and we can uh, designate various load generators to simulate various network conditions, like a 3G network or a 2G network or an LTE network. And then once we know exactly how the users are going to uh, get the response time under load is when we have a true picture of the performance of application in the real world. So to wrap up our uh, mobile testing solutions, we talked about uh, mobile functional testing with UFT Mobile, which has two deployment options, the private hosted cloud, the virtual private cloud, as well as an on-premise solution, which we call Mobile Cloud Express. And for mobile testing uh, of performance of the application, we discussed HP Load Runner with its mobile protocols for true client and web, as well as Shindra Network Virtualization for baking in true network conditions into a load test. And both these solutions are integrated with the test management solution, HPLM or Quality Center. So we already talked about uh, distribution of mobile applications in our HP Anywhere solution. Now the last topic in this presentation, uh, we are going to talk about monitoring and measuring the performance of mobile applications. So when it comes to mobile applications and use in production, there are various factors impacting the performance. We have the application 
itself, which could be accessed through multiple mobile browsers, as well as the technology, uh, the operating system fragmentation, whether it's a Windows platform or Apple and Android. And we can, uh, you know, uh, visualize that there could be an impact of the device itself, of the platform itself. Uh, for example, a JavaScript might behave faster on a certain platform versus another, which can cause end user response times to vary with respect to the device they're using. It's also the tower of the radio network, the telecom network that the users are going through. Somebody is going through, you know, you know, uh, Vodafone network. Somebody is going through Optus. Somebody is going through, uh, you know, uh, you know, various networks in various countries. Uh, so, in this example, you can see, uh, you know, we, we have examples of various carriers, devices, uh, browsers as well as backend systems or the mobile applications which might be hosted in various clouds. Uh, could be an Amazon cloud, could be Zaxbit. So to get a true picture of the performance of a mobile application, we really need to be able to pinpoint the problems at each of these layers. Whether it's happening at the device layer, whether it's happening at whether the user is experiencing problems because of the network they're going through or, or the carrier that they're going through. So the end-to-end -end mobile performance management solution, or APM, Application Performance Management Solution from HP, helps us solve across all the layers in the mobile application. And it can not just pinpoint problems, <coughs> but also help us do analytics and predict uh, with respect to where the problems might arise in the future. So when it comes to the application, we can baseline the actual real user performance as well as we have capability to simulate mobile application traffic through various devices located in various networks. We have uh, you know, various views uh, with respect to the towers, the carriers that users are going through. Uh, and also, ultimately, the goal is to measure availability and performance, but also reduce the mean time to repair, so quickly diagnose the problem areas. So within minutes, we are able to get access to all the data to help us pinpoint the root cause of the performance problem. Uh, and also, we want to be able to see with respect to our application or the service that we are providing to our customers, we want to be able to see which customers are getting good response time, whether they're coming from a certain device or a certain carrier. So we want to understand the transaction response times and the popularity of the pages that they might be visiting. So a complete profile of the transactions themselves and all these three areas are addressed through the application performance management solution. So the first uh, topic or the first solution that I am going to talk about is the HP Real User Monitoring Solution, which can collect data from the mobile application. So today there is an app for Android, which can help us collect data from an Android, and there is an Apple app or an uh, iPhone app that's on the roadmap, which will help us collect data even from iPhone. We can also collect data from various network points. And once we have this data, we can send it back to our console, to our management platform, where we can see the various uh, you know, response times by the users with respect to the devices that they're coming from, with respect to the networks that they're coming from, and also with respect to the pages that they're accessing on the application. The next way to measure mobile application performance is the synthetic monitoring way, which is where we uh, simulate traffic to the mobile applications, to the backend, through designated machines or devices. And they are connected to either real networks or through a Wi-Fi network. And we're able to run scripts periodically from these devices and get a profile of the performance of the response times over a period of time. So this is a proactive and scheduled way of measuring performance of mobile applications, and we can conduct this from various global locations. And you can see on a dashboard, uh, you know, again, similar statistics with respect to the carrier, with respect to the transaction, with respect to uh, the location that the user is coming from, what is the typical response times of, uh, that the users are experiencing at any given time during the day.
Now, monitoring and measuring the performance of, this, uh, of mobile applications is one thing, but having the capability to predict and warn and get early warning into mobile upcoming mobile application issues is another thing. So HP Predictive Analytics, which is part of the HP BFM solution, helps us use uh, complex algorithms to, to look at trends from the various activities that are going on, the metrics that we are receiving for, for measurements, for the response times, for the network delays, for the latency. And it is able to correlate all that information, has historical intelligence, and at the same time, the capability to use these complex algorithms to extrapolate where a particular problem might arise in the future. So that, coupled with our proactive monitoring as well as uh, the synthetic monitoring, provides a complete solution for managing the application performance. So this slide uh, kind of summarizes the end-to-end -end mobile application performance management solution that can help us not just manage from the inside, but also from the outside. We have end user management capabilities for synthetic monitoring, which is where we run the scripts periodically from various networks, various devices, various locations, and get a profile of the response time. We also have real user monitoring to manage, uh, to monitor each and every user transaction that's coming into my application through various networks. And by putting these non-intrusive probes at various points in the network, we are able to capture the network traffic and able to analyze response times. And ultimately, be able to correlate it with system metrics, uh, you know, whether it's CPU, memory, network latency, et cetera, all that into a runtime service model for the service intelligence and analytics that we want to use for prediction. So this all put together provides, as I said, a complete application performance management solution to manage, monitor the availability and performance, but also triage and diagnose the root cause of the problems for early resolution so that customers are least impacted and best satisfaction is provided with respect to their experience with the mobile applications once they are put to use. So with that, I'd like to thank you for your time. Uh, you know, uh, we've covered the three areas of building uh, and distributing mobile applications, testing mobile applications, and managing the performance of mobile applications once they're deployed in production. So uh, with that, I would like to hand it back over to Damien. And for the next few minutes that we have on this webinar, I'm happy to take a few questions. Thanks very much, Manish. <coughs> Excuse me. Just a reminder that um, you receive an email after this webinar presentation. Um, and it's not your opportunity to register and enter to win a $50 um, Amazon gift card so, by opting in and hearing more about HP. So for details, uh, check your email inbox for more details. And um, I'd like to ask, does anyone have any questions? If you do, just ask the questions via the questions panel. All right, I'll kick off with a question, Manish. Um, the question I have, is the on-premise UFT mobile solution sold as a perpetual license or is it a subscription? Uh, yeah, great question, uh, Damien. So this is a, a sold as a subscription today. Uh, we want to keep it consistent across our virtual private solution, uh, which we have the device we have hosted in our cloud, as well as the on-premise solution. Uh, you know, one important uh, Thing I should mention is that the hardware that is shipped for the on-premise solution, that is a one-time charge, but the software license is an annual subscription. Uh, we also know that the devices are getting updated really uh, you know, quickly in the market, so there are device templates that we ship to our customers along with the solution, and uh, the way to manage this effectively to keep it updated is to not charge customers a perpetual license and then charge them annual maintenance every year, but rather we are going with the preferred trend in the industry, which is a subscription-based model. Great, thanks for that, Manish. Um, are there any other questions from anyone that'd like to ask? Okay, yes, we have one here, Manish. 
Uh, question I have here is, what is the time frame for delivering an on-premise UFT mobile solution in Asia once an order has been placed? Uh, sure. Uh, so we are uh, committed to deliver this within uh, 7 to 10 days. Uh, so this is shipped from Israel. And uh, there, are, there could be additional delays uh, due to customs in individual countries. Uh, so the expected time of delivery is within 7 to 10 days. Great. Thanks for that. Okay, I have another one here. Um, can HP handle support or new device models and how fast will support be available for these device models after their release? Yeah, so uh, as I said, uh, you know, the, the support today, is, uh, there's a website, the URL on which we have listed all the latest and greatest devices that are getting supported. Uh, the frequency with which we update uh, is, is best in class in the industry. This is the market leading solution today. And, uh, you know, there, there is, uh, for example, the moment iOS 7 came out, uh, you know, we were pretty quick. Uh, within a couple of days, we were able to roll out the solution. So it can, uh, you know, depend on the availability of the devices in the market and specific markets that might be specific concerns. But overall, uh, there's a pretty good uh, turnaround time with respect to supporting new devices. And in terms of uh, even the virtual private cloud solution, I, I would like to mention that uh, there is a good amount of flexibility with respect to, uh, you know, getting new devices in your pool of devices as you go along with your testing. So if, you know, you, somebody subscribed to a virtual private cloud solution today, and, it, uh, you know, we started off with say, four devices, a uh, dedicated set of devices, but six months from now, there was a new model in the market which really is on fire, everybody is buying it, and you really have a need to test your application on that new device, we can quickly provision that device for you in the first solution. And, of course, when we talk about the on-premise, uh, solution where the customer brings his own device, uh, you can instantly plug and play new devices as soon as the template for that device is available from the factor. Great, thanks, Nish. Um, I have another question here. Uh, can UFT Mobile help with manual testing? Uh, yes, as I mentioned in my uh, presentation, so it is not just about doing automated testing, but there might be certain areas of uh, your application for which you really need to do manual testing, especially you know, if you want to test scenarios with respect to audio interjection, uh, making a phone call while accessing a mobile application, or even connecting to a Bluetooth device. All those scenarios are very well supported uh, within the framework of UFT Mobile. Great. I have another question here. Um, is the license uh, per phone model OS or both? I'm sorry, could you please repeat that question? Uh, is the license uh, per phone model, um, the operating platform or software, or both? So the license uh, for uh, UFT Mobile is not restricted to a particular phone model. You can use any model. It is licensed by the number of cradles. So it is the cradle is where the device is plugged in. So essentially, we are licensing it by the number of concurrent devices that will be accessed at any given time. So for the on-premise solution, for example, it is sold in multiples of two cradles, but the customer can have any number of devices. And in the list of supported devices, we have hundreds of devices. So if a customer buys 100 devices to test his mobile application, but at any given time, he wants to test only two devices concurrently, then we are only charging for the two cradles. Uh, same way for the hosted uh, private cloud solution, it is sold in multiples of four cradle. Now, in the hosted solution, by default, the customer has to decide up front which four devices he wants to use in the four cradle. But then, as I said, as the year progresses and the customer has a need to plug in another device into the cradle, they can always uh, plug in a new device where it's only the additional cost of the device that is incurred to add that device to the pool. And it's not the whole license that the customer has to buy by per device. Did that answer that question? 
Um, I'll ask Raul. There you go. Um, he has another question, actually. Um, so Raul, if you could let us know via the question panel if that answered your question. Um, the next question I have for Raul is, can it support uh, local carriers or mobile service providers? Uh, so for the hosted private cloud solution, the virtual private cloud, uh, we have data centers in uh, some APJ countries. Uh, again, uh, we can you know point you to the URL where we provide the list of all the supported carriers and devices. But then the on-premise solution, the mobile cloud express, is a solution that the customer uses on his premises. So if a customer in Korea or a customer in China wants to test on their local mobile carriers, it might be, and if we do not have a hosted uh, data center or virtual private cloud solution in that particular country, then the option would be to go for an on-premise solution. So the customer in Korea would buy the devices, uh, would buy the credits of the UFT mobile solution and buy his own devices connected to the network of their choices. So yes, the on-premise solution very easily supports the local carriers in various countries uh, where the testing is going on. Great, thanks, Anish. Now, are there any further questions from anybody? Uh, in that case, I will wrap up today's uh, webinar. I'd like to thank uh, Manish from HP for presenting today. And uh, be sure to check out uh, the Vivid website for uh, the recording of today's session. Thank you, everyone, for attending, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thanks, everybody, for attending. Thank you.